why shouldn't you buy real estate in South Korea? Hi everyone, so I'm going to talk on this video about why you shouldn't buy real estate in South Korea in most situations as a foreigner, as either an expat living in South Korea or a non-resident buying in South Korea. Um, now, a lot of my clients are expats. You can find out more about that on my website, adamfad.com, and they're interested in financial um, investments, including real estate. And indeed, we help people with things like that, including overseas real estate investments, but also stocks and uh, you know, pensions and so on. So I've seen a lot of people go for real estate all around the world as expats and as non-residents. And I'm going to say why I don't think it makes sense to go for South Korean real estate. Now, number one, if you go on any kind of you know, comparison website like Nomboro or whatever it's called, you'll actually see that South Korean real estate is one of the most expensive in the world when it comes to affordability, but also when it comes to rental yields. What do I mean by that? Rents in South Korea, similar to the Chinese market, are some of the cheapest in the world relative to the price of actually buying the house. So it's not unusual in some parts of Korea to have a situation where somebody's paying, I don't know, 14,000 US dollars a year uh, on rent, but the actual price of buying that house might be $800,000 a year, for example. And that's crazy. In general, if rental yields are lower, that's not a good sign long term for the real estate market. Um, you know, obviously there can be exceptions to that, but that's a general rule of thumb. Because what you also have to remember is, look at it like this. Let's say you were going to buy a house as a home and you went to the bank and you said, I'm looking for a mortgage for the house. And the bank says, you know, it's going to cost about 2000 US dollars a year, the equivalent in, uh, sorry, a month, the equivalent in one, whatever, but let's just, you you know, use US dollars. So they say it's going to be 2000 a year or, or a month, sorry. Um, and you find out that renting that same place would only cost you 1500 or 1200 a month. Would you buy that place? You would think twice about it, right? But it's crazy. There are many places in South Korea where if you rent the same property, it's actually going to cost you less. So what does that mean? This is linked to the first point, but it's also the second point. You're just hoping for the property to go up in value rather than focusing on rental yield and leverage. That's a speculation. As Warren Buffett and Harris have said, when it comes to property and land in particular, you should focus on what the asset is yielding you. So if the asset is yielding you a good rental yield, um, and indeed you can leverage the asset, that's more important than capital values. But because the price in South Korea is so high relative to the rental yields, if you buy a house in South Korea, um, basically the only way you're going to make good money is if the price goes up a lot in terms of capital value. And even if it does, that's a speculation, which leads me to another point. And that's that there's nothing in the fundamental economic data in Korea, which shows that the uh, past is going to be replicated. So in the past, yes, um, capital values have gone up in, you know, dramatically in some cases. But now South Korea has uh, an aging population. It has the worst fertility rate in the world. There's an average of 0 0.8 babies per, per woman now. Uh, economic growth, just like most developed countries now, has fallen. It used to be quite high, but now it's about 2 or 3% per year. And it's going to fall probably more in the future because of that aforementioned issue. So there's nothing in the data showing that the past will replicate itself. And then finally, obviously, as a foreigner, especially if you're not married to a Korean, you're probably not going to speak the language well. There's going to be a lot of issues there. Um, and what's more, there's better property markets out there, um, including the US and the UK and, and our, our markets I've introduced my clients to, where basically rental yields are much better. I personally am not an absolutely huge fan of property in any market. I think when people come out with statements like, oh, you can't lose a property and all this kind of thing, it's very untrue. But having said that, in some markets at least, like the UK, like the US, even like Germany, you can get a good rental yield 
and what's more uh, it's more likely if you speak the language and and, and you know you're helped by um, an agent or whatever it's more likely in those markets at least as a foreigner that you're going to do well so i would say when it comes to korean property just like chinese property it's more the kind of thing only to do if you want to live in korea you want a house in korea you want to settle down in korea it's not the kind of thing to do if you're just an expat for a few years or indeed you're a non-resident